stay to the right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Driven Dave here. We've got kind of a quickie video for you tonight. Just had an opportunity to uh, drive a 2003 Lincoln Town car on the freeway and uh, wanted to share that with you all and uh, just kind of share some some driving impressions of, you know, what can really only be called a legendary American sedan. Uh, and certainly this car was the last of a dying breed, you know, full, full frame car, body on frame. Uh, just keep right on the state route to North. Sorry, my, my guy's talking to me here, but, uh, but yeah, these cars built on the Panther platform. So you got your Lincoln Town Car, your Mercury Grand Marquis, and your Ford Crown Victoria. Um, <clears throat> also, for a short time, the Mercury Marauder, but you know, it's all kind of the same. Uh, so, all of these cars, you know, share a chassis uh, and basically an engine drivetrain. Subtle differences, of course. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, police car and town car, exactly the same. Nope. <laughs> no nope. straight there. there for six minutes to um, 210 West Sorry about that. Boulevard. I should have turned him off first, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, police car and town car are not the same. I mean, yes, same engine. Yes, very similar transmission. Uh, but, you know, and there are some, you know, cheap Ford switch gear that is uh, shared by all of those cars, without a doubt. But uh, let me tell you something. I've owned, you know, I had my police car for a good five years. I put a lot of miles on that car, and I spent a lot of time behind the wheel. Uh, and although there are some similarities, you know, driving this town car, it, it does remind me of my police car, but it is not the same as my police car. This, this is a much, much nicer experience than my cop car. Uh, may it rest in peace wherever it is. I mean, I, I love my cop car. Wish I still had it, truth be told. But this town car, this is nice, you know? And Ford, Lincoln, whatever, they, they really figured out how to make like a, an isolating experience here. Um, driving this car, it's it's very analog. You know, you can feel the road. You can feel a lot of things. You know, there are a lot of things with this car where, you know, frankly, it's it's a little rough around the edges. You know, just in terms of overall fit and finish. You know, and no offense to. The owner of this car uh, is lovely, but you know, I'm just saying the, the design itself, you know. Um, but after all these years, this particular car has almost 172,000 miles. Runs great, right? Great. Um, you know, my Lexus LS400 has 290 horsepower and a pretty high tech V8. Um, this 2003 town car has, I don't know, 250 horsepower out of a not very high tech V8. Uh, and man, this thing is not slow. <laughs> like, I'm here to tell you, it, you know, you, you kind of think of these cars as being boring, uh, which they're really good at doing. I mean, and that's what's so great about the town car is that it can be very boring. Uh, and I like that in a car. I mean, and, and I should have started this review with a shout out to Colby. Sometimes when you need a town car, you need a town car. I mean, this is a town car, town car. Uh, I meant to throw that in at the top. Sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a lovely going to town rig. You know, if you need something to take you to the opera or the symphony, you know, it's a nice way to go, and it's still a really classy, elegant-looking car. Uh, in my eyes, it really doesn't look that dated. I, I mean, I know we've 
been used to seeing these for a long time, but they're, it's kind of a timeless design. They just, they always look good. I, I don't know how they managed to do that. Uh, you can see up here, you got the Lincoln logo kind of guiding the way. You just kind of aim that bad boy where you want to go and the car will sail you there. But yeah, as I was saying, like, this car is not slow. This car is quiet. I mean, we're, we're pulling like 73 miles an hour. It, it is quiet. It is very quiet. Um, you know, it appears that we're on a closed course in Mexico all of a sudden. Um, and you can see, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's not lightning fast, but we're going uphill. And this car weighs, I don't know, 55 tons and only has 250 horsepower. <laughs> but I mean, like, she really has plenty of get up and go. If you need to get around someone, if you need to uh, do a burnout, you can do that. I haven't tried it on this particular car, but I know it'll do it. I just know it. Um, yeah, I mean, plenty of highway passing power, plenty of power on the street. Um, I mean, it's really, it, it kind of has just enough. You're cool, you know, you're, you're all right. Gas mileage, you know, 16.9. Uh, I'm sure that with, one mile, with some careful, five lanes to careful use to of the, uh, uh, sorry, the guy's just going to talk over me, with some, care <laughs> with some careful use of the right foot, you can get that number to go up quite a bit. Uh, and certainly, like, the slower you drive, the better that's going to be. Uh, with my cop car, I was able to get, like, 23 miles per gallon if I went under 70 <laughs> on the freeway. If I went over 70, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, all bets were off. You know, it was just, it was going to be about 16.9, 17, sometimes less, usually less. <laughs> well, suddenly I have to So, excuse me for that. But yeah, man, this is just Keep great. On July um, West Foothill Boulevard. They he has these the really neat. To stay to the left onto I-210 West. So I'll let him finish. Uh, in fact, I'm going to turn him off and I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. I turned him off. So, uh, I was saying it has these really cool little uh, turn indicator lights. So when you uh, when you turn on the blinker, I'll try it. It's kind of hard to see. But it's a little dark in the area. You see that? So it's, it actually has a little lamp on the, uh, uh, like, it's either on the front bumper or on the front fender, on the right and the left side. I think it's on the bumper, actually. But it'll actually light up the lane that you're trying to get into so that you can kind of see where you're going. See? Look at that. Isn't that nice? I mean, for a company like Ford, and I don't mean to be mean, because I've owned several Fords, and I love them. But, you know, I feel like they kind of sometimes don't finish the job. <laughs> you know? So it was nice that they actually thought about doing that. I think that's nice. Um, we'll talk tech features just a little bit. Obviously, that's a really cool one. Uh, you know, we've got a steering wheel with uh, cruise control buttons. And that's neat. Uh, this is still kind of reminiscent of, you know, the late 80s, early 90s when, like, buttons on the steering wheel were really cool. I mean, look at that. You can change the temperature. Um, oh, we got the low fuel warning. That's cool. Whatever. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> um, volume, fan, temperature, uh, you know, radio controls. That's cool. I, I like all of that. Uh, neat features. Obviously, we've got the little uh, the fuel economy gauge there. The uh, auto lamps. We've got an air suspension light, but that's always going to be on. Uh, this car has been converted from air shocks in the rear. Most of these cars had air shocks, uh, and they always leak. I mean, it's it's not if, it's when. Uh, 
this car was purchased at around, I believe, 37,000 miles. And I think by like 45,000 miles, <laughs> the rear air shocks had uh, given up. So, you know, the kind of the most cost effective trick uh, is to just convert it to springs. And that's what's been done in this case. And, uh, and man, the ride quality is great. I'm sure the air suspension is better, but this is fine. A uh, couple other neat features. You've got the Lincoln timepiece here. As I recall, that's what the owner's manual says. It's not a clock, it's a timepiece. Um, and that's cool, you know, and I feel like this clock, it really kind of describes this car. You know, it's, it's a beautiful, elegant design. It's not particularly complicated and it doesn't need to be. It's just, it's classic, you know? Uh, we've got an aftermarket, uh, fairly long in the tooth, frankly, doubled in uh, receiver thing here, but you know, it's got satellite radio and play CDs and stuff. And it, and it will interface with an I, uh, iPhone. So that's nice. It won't charge the iPhone, but it will play the iPhone. So that's cool. And here you've got your dual zone climate control. Very, you know, again, kind of looks long in the tooth at this point or a little dated. But really nothing wrong with it. All the buttons are pretty easy to read and it's easy to operate and it works quite well. Put it on auto as a matter of fact. Uh, it gets the job done, man. You know, you don't, you don't need more than that. That's fine. Uh, up here you've got some of this stuff. Rear parking sensors, you can turn those off. It's got home link built in. Uh, it's got an oil change warning. Seems to me this car's been in the shop recently, probably had an oil change. Just that hasn't been reset, but that's cool. We've got an auto dimming rear view mirror, very nice. Uh, you know, a few squeaks and rattles, as to be expected from an old Panther. I mean, my cop car just, <laughs> that thing rattled. I, I bought it at 57,000 miles and it was just squeaking and rattling like crazy. Uh, I mean, these are not, you know, they, they, you just gotta be honest with what it is. But man, these run forever. Parts are still pretty cheap. Uh, you know, I think like most recently, he did have to do some repairs on this particular car, it needed, I think it needed a full tune-up. All eight coil packs, spark plugs, and, and that really made a big difference. I feel like something else happened recently, and I can't, I just can't remember what it was. Um, oh yeah, the uh, <coughs> rear axles, That that's kind of a common failure on these cars. The axles go bad. But it's not a huge, huge repair. You know, you got a solid rear axle in this car. So you just kind of have to change out the axle shafts on either side. No big deal. Um, what else is a common problem? Oh, the intake manifold. I can't remember if he's had to do that on this car. I would think so by this point. All of them pop the intake manifold because it's made out of plastic. Uh, even the updated intake manifolds before one of you out there starts itching to tell me I'm wrong. And hey, tell me I'm wrong. You know, comments only help. <laughs> You're not going to hurt my feelings. But but yeah, I mean, every 4.6 liter I've, I've ever driven has blown an intake manifold. Uh, you know, and, it, and that's just the way it is. But that's a pretty easy job. Like, you can do it yourself if you want to spend all day. Or you can pay your shop, you know, four to six hundred bucks and they'll do it. And frankly, it's worth it. <laughs> Whatever they're charging, that's worth it. Um, headlights, we've got your traditional, what you might call it, bulbs. You know, they're not HID and they work great. I love the headlights in this car. They, they do a good job of lighting up the night. Um, keep your lenses clean which, you know, this car has nice lenses, so it's pretty easy to see. Uh, high beams do an excellent job. And low beams, I mean, could be better, but they're not bad, man. I've, I've driven much worse cars. Uh, 
much worse headlights. So this is great. Um, interior, it's showing its age for sure. Uh, definitely could use a new cushion in the driver's side. It's been well loved. We'll just put it that way. And uh, but that's the way it should be. You know, this is a this is a well used car, well loved. You know, I can tell you that. Uh, suspension's been gone through. It's got new shocks all the way around. Struts, shocks. Um, I can't remember how new they are, but I think they're pretty new. Like maybe a year. And uh, ride quality is very nice. Soaks up the bumps really well. Uh, you know, it is not a sports car, but it, it will hang on to the road and it'll go around a corner. You know, you'll go, you'll go sliding across the seat, but it'll do it. Uh, brakes need some attention. They're a little squishy, uh, as tends to be a common problem with these cars. Uh, the Crown Victoria I had, the brakes were always squishy. Um, you know, it just feels to me like, I don't know, that maybe there's air in the lines in this one or something, or maybe the rear brakes are kind of going. I don't know. Uh, Driver's side door panel, pretty worn. <laughs> it's starting to separate a little bit from the door. That's a pretty common problem in these cars, especially in the Crown Vicks. Um, but certainly in the town cars as well, if they're used a whole bunch. Uh, and you'll see that oftentimes in the uh, livery vehicles. Uh, you know, like the airport, airport uh, delivery pickup. <laughs> what am I trying to say? You know, like, You'll see them with four or 500,000 miles. They're pretty amazing. Really, really good cars. I, in fact, I have a friend who has one with like 450,000 miles or something. And uh, I'm sure you're not watching this, Edo, but if you are, shout out. You're awesome, dude. Keep rocking the, the town car. It's awesome. He came here from another country, and <clears throat> it was like his dream to have one of these, and he got one, and he loves it. <laughs> and I love that about him. Uh, and I don't blame him. I, I love this car. If... If I had room in my life for a town car, I would have one. Absolutely. Uh, but I have the LS400. What would I do with this? You know. Uh, but man, this is a nice car. It it just kind of it carries you places. It doesn't. You know, you don't drive it. It carries you. It delivers you. Uh, you arrive in this car, and that's really cool. Uh, when I have the opportunity to drive it. I generally try not to be in a hurry driving this car because, you know, I mean, she will scoot, she will hurry, but that's not her specialty. Uh, her specialty is to do what I'm doing right now, and that's just chilling, you know, get up to the speed limit and just take it easy. It's just, it's the best way. Uh, now, oddly enough, and I'm not saying that I've done this in this country, but I've been told that this car, around 85, 90 miles an hour, is where it likes to cruise the freeway. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny that, but uh, yeah, yeah. And it, you wouldn't know you were going that fast, so I'm told. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, you can do that and not be in a hurry in this car, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty amazing. They they just kind of got the formula right on this. And I, I was really, I remember in 2011 when the last Crown Victoria rolled off the line in St. Thomas, uh, Canada, the St. Thomas assembly plant. And I just thought, man, it's the end of an era. And, and it really was. We just, we don't have cars like this anymore. I, I think like, you know, the closest thing you could get if you wanted to, like, experience this kind of luxury or this kind of feel, you know, big engine in the front, rear wheel drive. I mean, your only choices would really be to go with, like, one of the large German sedans, you know, like the BMW 7 Series, the Mercedes S-Class, uh, you know, Maybach, Rolls-Royce, stuff like that. And I'm not saying that, like, 
driving this is like driving a Rolls Royce. I'm sure Rolls Royce is much more refined, but but I mean, there's just I mean, you can't buy a new Lincoln that feels like this, you know. You can't buy a new Cadillac that feels like this. So it really is a special car. Anyway, folks, that does it for this little drive. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Say goodbye to the Lincoln.